Now let's examine raid creation. And raid features the ability to spread data across multiple disks, two or more. So data spread across two or more disks slash partitions. And more importantly, redundancy. And that is the ability to recover from catastrophe. And that's provided by RAID. Within Linux, a number of RAID versions or implementations are supported. So those are called levels, including 0, 1, 4, 5, 6, and 10 as well as some other features such as linear and container, among others. We'll look at the common types, 0, 1, and 5, that are implemented throughout data centers at the hardware as well as software levels. Now, of course, the software implementation of RAID is considered the poor man's RAID by contrast to a dedicated card to provide this functionality, or even firmware type RAID built into the BIOS, let's say Intel RAID for example, but nonetheless the kernel is able to, software-wise of course, aggregate your storage and provide levels of redundancy that are compliant with the RAID spec. So we've got some tasks. One, and that is to set up RAID 0. And of course before we can do so we'll need to lay out our partitions to reflect the various sizes that are appropriate for RAID. So one will create multiple partitions so that we can create multiple RAID devices. Let's connect to our server and do that since it typically requires a reboot so that we can take some notes during the intermission if you will. We'll SSH to 192, 168, 75, 20 and then we'll F disk list dev sdb to see what's going on there. There's some partitions defined that we'll clean up. Let's see SDC as well. And we can use parted to clean it up, F disk to create it, or either or, it doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and F disk dev sdb. And this is where we will delete the partitions, run help for any options, just like with parted. Some of the options are similar, although in part of it, it's RM versus D for delete. So let's delete some partitions. Partition number four, for example, and three, as well as two. We'll leave the LVM partition intact, and those partitions have been wiped. We should create some ancillary partitions for our various purposes. Since we're going to be creating three types of raids, we should ensure that there are enough partitions to go around without having to clobber existing partitions to make way for the new ones. So, supposing we have, let's say, two for RAID 0, two for RAID 1, and three for RAID 5, that means we'll need seven partitions. And we can do so using extended partitions by creating a logical partition, or as an logical partitions within the extended partition. So, to make a new partition, just type help, for example, and you'll see that the new partition option is N, and we can describe it as extended to use the rest of the disk. We can label it as partition, let's say, number 2, and use all of the cylinders that remain. So we'll start at 2432 and end at 4427, and that will cover the extended space. Now within the extended partition, we can create n number of logical partitions to suit our needs. So let's create a new partition, and we'll add it as a logical partition, 5 or over, starting at cylinder 2432. And for simplicity, perhaps we'll make each of these partitions 2 gigabytes. So that'll take us right up to the edge since the LVM partition is about 20 gigabytes. So let's make this partition 2G. Let's print it. And that leaves us some space to define the others. The extended 
logical partitions within the extended partitions begin at SDB5. So, and it is traditional to create the extended partition as the fourth partition, leaving three for primary. Let's create a new one. And this will also be a logical partition beginning at the default starting cylinder and also being two gigs in size. And we'll create some more. This will be also two gigabytes in size. Let's see how many are there now. So we're looking at five through seven or three partitions. We need a few more partitions. Now we can spread our data across the two drives that are available. So we need a total of seven and we can, let's say, mix and match from each. Since we'll be doing two, two for mirroring and RAID zero. So for example, we'll take SDB five and SDC five to make RAID zero. SDC6 or SDB6 and SDC6 to make RAID 1 and then we'll need SDB7 and two other partitions to make RAID 5. So let's go ahead and create that new partition and it'll default to also 2 gigabytes. The size is irrelevant so now this gives us an extra partition. So 7 and 8 could be a part of the RAID set in conjunction with something on SDC so let's go ahead and create on the other disk. We'll write the changes and then of course it will require a reboot. Let's launch SDC and print the table. We'll delete partition three and partition two and create a new partition extended and we'll make it partition two and we'll start at 2432 and go to the last cylinder 4427 and now let's create the logical partition. So we want the counterparts SDC5. So the first logical will start at 2432 and will grow to two gigabytes. And the second logical, let's, this doesn't support command history, redline support like parted. So the second logical will be SDC6, which will also be two gigabytes in size. And let's create another one and it'll be two gigs as well. Let's print the table. So SDB2 and C2 will form RAID 0, or B5 that is, and C5. B6 and C6 will form RAID 1. The other two from B, so 7 and 8, and 7 from here will form RAID 5. But we can also include it now since it requires reboot. So let's just define a, yet another partition starting at 3218 and making it plus two gigabytes. And now we have an equal number of partitions. So let's save the changes in fdisk list dev sdc. We have one through eight, sans three and four, and let's list b ditto one through eight, sans three and four. So we have an equal number of partitions, all of type 83 Linux, and these will be available to create our RAID set. So let's reboot the server so that the changes are committed. This will kick us off and then we'll set up in our documentation what we're going to do. So create multiple partitions. Dev SD and we'll use a character class to define B and C partitions 5 through 8. So this could also be defined using a character class. So 5 through 8. So those partitions are in place, and the next step for us is an init 6 to reboot the system. Once the system's back up, we need to define the RAID levels that are of interest, beginning with RAID 0. There's a key utility named mdadmin, which is a part of the mdadmin package, which is responsible for managing RAID devices. It operates in a number of modes, including but not limited to create, assemble, miscellaneous. And we will use the create mode to create devmd0, which is the traditional device name for the first RAID volume with subsequent devices being incremented accordingly. We'll have to define the level 
setting it to RAID 0. This is how we differentiate between 0, 1, 4, 5, 6, and 10. And then we'll also specify the RAID devices count to indicate the number of devices that will belong to this particular RAID set. And then we'll indicate dev SD, and we could use a character class or just list them individually. So dev SD B5 or dev SD B5, which is the first one, and dev SD C5 will make this RAID set. Once the RAID device has been created, we then need to overlay a file system. So at that point, we'll make 2FS type ext4 with journaling turned on on dev md0. Once a file system has been made, we'll create a mount point. So we'll make directory forward slash RAID0, followed by a mount of dev md0 in RAID0. Then we'll wrap up by modifying the persistent file or the file system table file FS tab. And then we'll move on to the other sets. So the next one will be RAID 1, which is largely a repeat of a process. So just to recap, similar to LVM, there are roughly six, seven steps. Create the partitions of type 83. Let's just note of type 83 or type Linux, not swap, or LVM. Reboot the system if necessary. Not all systems require reboot. You can try to see whether or not your kernel has detected the various partitions without error by examining the output. You may also use part probe to see if you can force the kernel to detect the new partition tables on the various disks. Once the partitions are available, use MD admin with the create option to create the RAID device out of the drives that are desirable. Two or more, of course. By now, our server should be up, and indeed it is. So, before doing so, let's just fdisk list dev sdb, dev sdc, and notice that dev sdb contains five through eight, four partitions, and ditto for dev sdc. So those partitions are in place. We can now create our RAID volume. So let's try to create it. And it started devmd0 for us. Once you see that the device has been started, it means that MD admin was successful in creating the particular dev tree entry out of the disks that are of interest to us. So in other words, it's worked. Now the next step for us is to overlay the file system on dev md0 and mount it, see whether or not it's accessible, and then outline the other types. So our steps include make2fs, which is one way of executing the creation of a file system on a device that's in the dev tree. So let's go ahead and make 2fs ext4 and devmd0. And this will set things up for us. Let's echo the exastatus to make sure that it's clean. Indeed. Then we will make a directory and mount the RAID 0 device or array in that particular directory. Let's echo the exastatus. And of course, mount will tell us whether or not things are clean. And indeed, it's up, read, write, which means if we LSL RAID 0, we should see loss and found. And if we sequence some data to that directory, it should certainly work. So it's RAID 0, and this should be 100k seemingly dot text. Indeed, we can write to it. So super, that's up RAID 0. And there are ways using MD admin to query the RAID sets that have been defined. So no need for you to memorize what was made where, although it doesn't hurt to spreadsheet or document these items in a spreadsheet. So that's RAID 0. It's up now. Because we've created all these partitions, everything's in place. Creating subsequent RAID types become even easier. So RAID 1, for example, instead of creating and initializing to level 6, which causes us to reboot, because the partitions are in place, we simply